The, the, there's an interesting report that it's, I'll call it an umbrella uh, body of uh, organizations came up with that dubbed uh, delayed justice. Interesting facts coming out from this particular report. And I'd just like to, uh, you know, get your perspective on a general way, uh, Hussein, in terms of uh, the trends we are picking uh, with these extrajudicial killings. Um, what are we looking at in terms of, of numbers? How bad is the problem? Uh, the numbers are huge. Um, we belong to a network together, Haki Africa, Amnesty, The Missing Voices. And in the last four years, we have over 650 police-related killings. Uh, and these statistics are there. They are open for everyone. And one of the reasons why we decided to come up with Missing Voices is because every time one institution came up with figures, you know, the state would uh, you know, doubt, doubt that. They would point fingers and say, oh, you're saying 10. He is saying 50, he is saying 30. So we came together, Haki Africa, Amnesty, and others, and decided let's do this collectively so that we confirm these uh, statistics and we present them to the state to show them that what is happening in this country is unacceptable. So those figures, are, you know, we have evidence, we can confirm, we have uh, testimonies, we have statements and, and all that. So we are looking at over 600 Kenyans who were killed in a span of less than four years. And this year, as we are, you know, we are counting, it's much worse compared to last year. If you look at what happened in Rivayala, for example, okay. those were over 40 bodies. And the problem is that, you know, in the past regimes, every time you came up with uh, this information and you shared and you told the state, you need to do something about this. The first thing they always did was to re uh, refute these claims. When it was so evident, <coughs> when we went, we saw bodies with our own eyes in Rivayala. But the police spokesperson the next day came up and said, it is not true. You are refuting claims that everyone can see, that communities tell you we see uh, pro box vehicles and double cabin pickups, which are normally usually uh, associated with the police service, coming in the dead of the night, in the wee hours, early morning hours, when children are rushing to school for, for preps, you know, at four, at five, stopping at the river and openly dumping bodies in the river. These are facts that are out there, you know? And uh, we are happy now because we have institutions that are supposed to be dealing with these issues. Okay. But our main concern was that in the past there was a, a lack of political will. Now, this statement coming from the president, uh, for us, we believe that sets the ball rolling. You know, for further investigations, as uh, Dismas has uh, suggested, we need that commission of inquiry to look into these issues. Because, for example, at the coast, when these operations happen, and the next morning you go to the police station and tell them, why did you do this? The local command have no idea of what had happened the previous night in their own jurisdiction. So you will see clearly that this unit was operating over and beyond the normal command. Because the police stations there, the OCSs, the OCPDs, usually have no idea. In fact, when we go to report, they're actually hearing that from us. They're asking us questions, where? What happened? Because they don't know. So it, uh, these units come, they do what they do, they leave almost immediately, and you know, even the local command does not, does not understand what has happened. So I think uh, the time has come just to respond. Uh, the figures are overwhelming, mm -hmm. and I think, uh, as my colleagues have said, we need that commission of inquiry so that we can confirm truly how bad is the situation. These figures that we are giving, those are just figures that we have as institutions. And I'm sure there are many more out there who have not even come forward. Maybe they're even afraid of doing that. Okay.